I'm Terry Moran. I'm the head of music here at the German European School. I joined us back in 2006 and I've been with us for 15 and a half years. It was a really small school and going up the hill it was just a lovely environment, just the nature, seeing the hornbills on top of the buildings, um, the monkeys, they were quite fun. Going down the uh, old walkway to the swimming pool you would have to uh, dodge some monkeys so you weren't being attacked every now and then. Um, the music room, there was two music rooms when I first joined. Uh, one was under the teacher's tower and the other was on the top floor above the canteen. And then the school exploded, so we actually closed the car park in underneath the canteen and made that the music department. We built uh, the VIP rooms back then. And then we took over space in the IAS. At one point, we actually did design. Between the canteen block and the IAS hall, we had to uh, design plans because we actually were going to build a block in there. So we were growing very quickly and it was part of those problems back then where we were going to go. Uh, at one point we even had a class at the Hollandaise School because we just didn't fit on our campus anymore. I remember my first assembly I went to and the head of primary got up, it was uh, Bruce Holm at the time, and he spoke to the students, there was a few certificates, and then that was it, and I went, what? There's no school song? There's no national anthem? There's nothing? That's why I wrote the school song. I, I thought it would be a nice thing to bring us together as a community. And so away I went. I started writing bits of it here and then. Sometimes I was sitting at home writing it and other times I'd be between lessons writing some of the lyrics. After writing the song, I had to then present it to the board. So I took this little mobile keyboard up to a board meeting in the, in the old room up there on the main campus, played it, sang it, and found out I made a mistake. There was actually a mistake in the very first edition of the school song. It started off as here in G-E-S. I forgot an S. So that's why um, I had to go back then and do some rewrites of the lyrics, but the board loved it. After the completion of the English lyrics, Jürgen Furka, who was one of our German sect teachers, he then did a basic translation of the school song to create our German verse. Firstly, the school song and the poem, and if you read through the lyrics, you will see, here in Singapore we gather from afar, German European school, this is who we are. So the whole thing's a rhyme, and it's a story. It's a story of coming to Singapore, it's a story of being at our school and learning to have skills to achieve mighty things, basically. Actually, the very first performance, the, I guess the grand presentation of the school song, um, we actually had an orchestra um, of students and staff present it, and we had taught all the primary school, and they actually sang it to the secondary school. So that's the first presentation of our school song. When I first joined, we only had a drumming teacher coming in doing lessons, and that was in a drumming studio which was built underneath the sports hall down at the Swiss Club. Um, and yeah, once a week or something, he'd come in and do lessons. And that's when I decided we'd get a vocal and instrumental program happening. I just finished teaching a German Sec ICT class, came down the stairs, and I ran into Bruce Holm, who was our head of primary back then in 2006. And I said, Bruce, I want to start this vocal and instrumental program. I need, I need, I need a helper. I need a parent to, or a secretary, somebody to help me get it up and running. And he said, I've got the right person, Jennifer Starnitz. And it was one of his uh, mums from his class. And Jennifer helped me get it up and running. In 2006, in the new academic year, we started the vocal and instrumental program. We started with 30 students. And by, I think it was by the end of that semester, we hit over 100 students and we had our recitals. But as it grew, we got to the point, it wasn't one concert, it was a lot of concerts. So we had 
then made the decision to have a gold concert. And it was almost like the idea of getting the golden ticket so you could uh, get to the next next stage. And uh, so we had our first gold concert and, and we had some really great performances at that. In 2009, I started the string program. Um, I decided, look, having a book, holding a picture up of a violin or a viola, going onto YouTube, or even just pressing play and hearing it, it wasn't good enough. So I decided that we would start a program, an eight week program. The kids had an instrument and an actual tutor who taught that specific instrument, taught that instrument to the kids. And, and we finished off the program with a concert. So each group would present to their parents and they get to see the achievement they made. Being the head of music and coming up with this mad idea of this eight week program, it was a challenge and actually it was a bit of a gamble. And thankfully the gamble paid off. We had our first concert, it was a success and parents loved it. And as you know, we still have the program today. So before we opened the primary campus, we used to have this thing called Music Week. And like a camp, we, we, we didn't go away. We actually had an entire week where we closed off the music program and kids elected to be part of our Music Week. So we'd have different ensembles. We'd have guest people coming in and presenting uh, choir projects, etc., And we present concert at the end of the week. We had to stop it because we just got too big and we couldn't house the facilities to, to run this. Here in Singapore, we gather from afar. German European school, this is who we are. Many tongues and colors, we join from east to west. Now you're turning 50, it's happy birthday, Jess.